You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. I don't know if rich people eat corned beef pie, but I had a few shekels left over in my pocket this week, so I've pushed the boat out and made an extra special version here with enough corned beef to get your doctor all riled up. And of course, without pastry, this corned beef pie would just be a pile of corned beef, really. So I've already started with 400 grams of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, a good pinch of pepper, and a teaspoon each of dried thyme and dried oregano. And I want to make sure they're all mixed in properly. Before I go in with my fat, and I'm starting with 100 grams of cold cube butter and 100 grams of cold cube lard. And if you're rich and you've never heard of lard, it's what northerners eat. And my machine is going to do a great job here of blitzing all this to a fine breadcrumb texture. And if you doubted the ability of my machine to do this, well, you were wrong because you can see the texture there, can't you? And I like to add two tablespoons of vinegar to this because it gives a nice bit of flavour and it makes your pastry dead tender. And all we need to do now is to add 100 to 125 millilitres of cold water to this mix. And you can either use water from your tap or some of this. Icelandic glacier water mixed with 5 milligrams of gold. An absolute snip at $60,000 a bottle. And speaking of glaciers, we're going to want to bring this pastry together at a glacial speed now because I'm worried that my machine might overblend my dough at this point. So I'm bringing it together with very slow, sharp bursts. You could bring it together with your hands at this point, of course. But if you're doing it with your machine, take it easy. And when our pastry is pretty much one large mass in there, we can get it out and bring it together. So I'm going to flour my surface. And I can now give this pastry dough a little knead to bring it together into one smooth ball. And being poor might not be much fun. But out of the dust of human rubble that the British class system produces, some fantastic stuff has emerged, you know. Like this corned beef pie, for instance. It's better than fuzzy jar, anyway. And if you don't know what fuzzy jar is, look it up, it's pretty grim. Anyway, my pastry's going in the fridge now to have a bit of a life of leisure for a bit, and that'll give us time to crack on with the potatoes. And I have around 400 grams of waxy potatoes here, and I like to cut them into bite-sized chunks and leave them whole in my pie. But we do still need to cook them completely with a generous amount of salt, and that will take around 20 minutes. And while they're cooking, we can crack on with the filling, and I'm starting with a medium onion and I'm going to fry that in a pan until it goes translucent. And that'll only take a few minutes on a medium heat. And hey, did, did you look up Fuzzy Jar? Did you? Did you do it? <laughs> Grimmer. Anyway, I'm grating a medium carrot next, but I'm going to try and make sure I don't grate any of my gloves in with this. Because latex gloves don't taste very nice in this pie, in my opinion. And now, here is why this is a corned beef pie for rich people, because I'm using two tins of corned beef here. And that's a whopping 680 grams. I've aimed for a roughly two times the corned beef to potato ratio here, as I was feeling flush. But you can go an equal amount of corned beef to potato if you like, if you're struggling financially. And for me, vinegar pairs really well with corned beef. So I've added a little bit here. And you can spice this how you like, really. But uh, it won't need any salt. Maybe some pepper would be nice, or some other kinds of herbs. It's up to you, isn't it? I bet you lot never stick to my recipes anyway. But whatever you choose to do, we need to get our potatoes back in at this point, and they can go straight in our pie filling here. And you can mash these potatoes if you like, but I like to find a nice jewel of potato in my pie while I'm necking it, as it adds a little bit of texture, you know. And I always think it's a good idea to add a little splash of water at this point to replace what's been lost in this gentle cooking process. And I reckon our filling is done now, and we need to let that cool fully before we put this pie together. But while all that's happening, we can prepare our pie crust. And we have enough for the top and the bottom of our pie here. So cut it roughly in half and give it a bit of a knead again. If you've got a servant or a slave, get them to do this for you. Save your manicure, you know. But make sure you threaten them a bit so they don't over knead at this point. And I don't want anybody to help me roll out this pastry because this is my favourite bit. And I'm doing this on some baking paper. And as you roll, you want to turn your pastry regularly to ensure an even roll. And you can add a dusting of flour from time to time to keep this process going smoothly. And hey, you can even flip it over if you like to keep it moving and make sure it's not sticking. And obviously you want to make sure this pastry is the correct size. So bring your pan in to compare and make sure it's big enough. And I'm using a standard 24 centimetre pan here. And the best way to get this in your pan is to fold it up into a little parcel before picking it up and plonking it in. And then you'll need to take a bit of time making sure this is all neat and tidy. And while I do this, you could click on the like button for me if you like, and uh, yeah, you can subscribe as well, I suppose. That'd be nice.
I mean, I'd love to see you again coming around and watching my videos, because I think you're awesome. So now I've made all that look nice and smart, and you've done all your jobs, I'm going to trim this with scissors now, and I could have used a sharp knife to cut this like, but my scissors were at hand, because I'd just cut my own hair before making this. And we have to roll out the roof of our pie, or the lid, or the top. I don't know, does the top of a pie have its own special name? Top crust was the best I could come up with after a quick Google, but that just doesn't seem interesting enough to me. And all you pan comparison fans are going to be absolutely chuffed here because we're doing another pan comparison. And I'm just going to flip this now and brush off any excess flour. And I'm good at this bit because I come from a long line of chimney sweeps. So I have a good skill set for this task. And if you're still reeling from discovering what fuzzy jaw is, your mind will be really blown when you look up chimney sweep cancer. I think I lost a couple of great great uncles to that back in Victorian times. But anyway, enough of my life story because the cool filling is in our pie now. So let's press on, eh? And I have two egg yolks here, which are going to come in really handy to stick the top and the bottom of this pastry crust together first. And once those two egg yolks are whisked up nicely, I'm just going to go ahead and brush the rim of the bottom crust here. And I was careful enough with my filling just to leave a little rim there around the side so I could easily get to this with the brush. And now I'm going to roll the top piece on my ancient rolling pin and then carefully place it on top of the pie. And then I just have to roll it back out again. And I think going pretty well yeah i'm going to press the edges from the top crust into that sticky rim on the bottom crust to seal it all in and i'm trying to make sure there are no air pockets in here but i wasn't 100 percent successful to be honest and let's give this another haircut so it looks its best just like me with my new ball cut and once it's had a good trim we can really press those edges down properly and i'm going to brush the top of this with my beaten egg yolks and once i've done it once I'm going to let it dry, or at least leave it until it becomes tacky. And at this point, once you've brushed it once, you can add any little fancy pastry patterns on top, and I've gone simply with nom nom nom, just because can't beef pie nom 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 nom. Before brushing a second time with the beaten egg, and brushing with the egg yolk twice, will give you a stunning golden finish to this pie. And once you're done with the egg yolk, you can go around and score the edges with a fork to finish. And the oven is already really well preheated at this point. I've got it on at 180 degrees Celsius fan setting. And once we're happy with how our pie looks, and I must say I am quite happy with how that looks, to be honest, we're going to get a baking sheet in here, whack the pie on top of it, and then bake this at the bottom of the oven for at least an hour to cook that pastry properly. And once this pie is fully baked, it should be lovely and golden on top like this. And you can see how well that double egg wash has worked here. So that's the proof that I wasn't lying. And this rich man's corned beef pie might have cost me a relative fortune, and it certainly looks a million dollars, but it won't cost you as much as pearl albino caviar at $100,000 a kilo, so you lot will be able to afford to make this easy. And I suppose at this point I should give you the money shot now by bringing in a piece to show you. And you can see the chunks of potato in there, and let's check this pastry's cooked by having a close-up of the bottom and you can see it's nice and dry and crisp. Rich man's corned beef pie. Don't eat it every day though, or all your savings will be eaten up by medical bills. Stay safe everyone, and I'll see you again soon hopefully, eh? Yeah? Terra. <laughs>